Gomez. Walto makes a run ahead of it. Burkamp suddenly changed pace through the centre. It's Burkamp! That's magnificent! The move, and then this, which left Dabby's ass totally stranded. Hello, welcome to Burkout Wonderland, the podcast for the team that scored 25 league goals in six league games. That, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, mums and dads, that, that is football. We have officially won football, and then you look at the shit that... Oh, there we go. There goes monetization. Look at the droll shit that Man City have been pumping out. Got a 1-0. We scraped to 1-0. Look at you. You're rubbish. Liverpool players are all broken, and with me tonight to do a dance on the grave of Man City and Liverpool, hopefully, is Deke. How are you doing, Tree? Cool? I'm all good. I watched the Man City game because uh, I'm stupidly doing FPO a little bit. Um, oh. But I watched it and Bournemouth were really unlucky to not get themselves a consolation goal. Um, yeah. They deserved an equaliser 100%. Haaland even came off after about 73 minutes. Alvarez was put up top. Um, De Bruyne came on, did nothing. I I really... I Obviously, last season we saw City have the second half of the season resurgence. Yep. We're not seeing that this season. We're not seeing that this season. It's going to be very right. interesting to see how the season finishes. That run of 17 straight wins or whatever it is they did because they're not on drugs. Um, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen again. And it's wonderful. Did you what did you listen to English coverage of the game? Did anybody at home and on the bus and walking the dog listen to that? That bitter, twisted, sour faced, fucked hard Rio Ferdinand. Oh, he's so, he can't yeah. help himself, can yeah, he? And that, even the commentators. Really good. Even the commentators say after they go, Rio Ferdinand, just to be clear, has got utmost yeah. uh, respect yeah. for uh, Bakayo Saka. And it's like, the fact that you've had to state that, I think pretty much says what everybody thinks about the statements that he's making. Absolute, Absolute bell end. He's, he sounds like a bitter child that's not got the Christmas gift he wanted. Sounds like he's had a fucking blow to the head. Um, let's go and uh, say hello to some of the fellow glorious gooners that I don't think any we will listen to. The um, it reminds me, I'm gonna go here. I, I'm it's gonna slow us down a little bit, but if I don't go and get it up, I'll forget to do it, and you'll know I forget to do it. There we go. The shorts from last night's predictions with me and Stan 124 views on a YouTube shorts for a podcast no one listens to. Not bad at all. Let's go and have a say hello to some of the people that are in the chat. Paul Nell, not Neil, will, but he's a, Hope we make it 5-0. Don't want to ruin it for you, Paul, but it didn't happen. Phil Macker is there as always. We made Newcastle look like a broken toy. Ha-ha, we did indeed. And lots of numbers. Great result. Only negative. A late consolation. Wouldn't have happened with Erdegaard on the pitch. ESR didn't help the defence with, uh, with Gabriel out of position. On a side note, the Erdegaard shutting down of, of players today not only led to goals, stopped goals, but he was mag- him and Jorginho. Oh, yeah, incredible! Don't do the chef's kiss thing because I'll fucking get angry. But you can give it. Uh, you can give it one of your your sexy salutes. <laughs> give a little under uh, under the table tickle. You got to have a system. No, oh, it was it. It's beautiful to see, wasn't it? Completely agree. Uh, Michael in Sweden is there. We haven't seen you for a while, Michael. I hope you're good. Tom Andrew is there. Mr. Waffles in Not Portland. And uh, and lots of numbers. ESR Mr. Late Sitter. Don't don't ruin it. Canterbury Guna has joined us. Hello. Uh, Bernadette is there. Hello, Bernadette. I haven't seen you for a while. Sai is there. I'll take it out, obviously. Uh, Tom says, uh, Danny 5 0, like I said yesterday, it's Halen's still account. Ah, oh, I see. Rudy is there. Evening, guys. Haven't expected that, that a convincing victory. I don't think anybody did. Uh, size of green. The City game was rubbish. It was. And what else? We've got Tub, Tubly Fool says, Happy days. Both scumbag Brunos lost, and we looked like a we wanted to spank Newcastle, and we did. Zaid is there. Oi, oi, Zaid. Nice to see you. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Ron Ree has turned up. It's two shows in a row for you, Ron Ree. You're all right. Patrick Carlson is there. Hello. And Rick Downing is there. Just to think what we could do with an out-and-out striker. Oh, well, it might, might ruin things. It might make them better, but it might well said, also Rick. ruin things. I'll tell you who played well today, Danny. Go on. Yep. Ollie Watkins. Ollie Watkins had a good game today. Very nice game today for Villa. What did he do? He 
got himself a goal and an assist, but just oh. caused havoc up top. But I say that in a game where Havertz caused havoc up top. That's, that's his middle name, isn't it? Havertz, Haggart, Haggart. Havertz, Havertz, yeah. But yeah, that's I it. failed that one. I let, my, nice I let one. you down. I let the, I let the Arsenal spotting world down. It's my inability to put two simple words together. Um, right, start us off. Let's... Uh, um, hold on, I was doing something on another page there. Let's talk about the lineup, shall we? I have got some pictures for you people. The first one I've got <laughs> is that. Benny Blanco, Le Mister. Oh, I'll have that tattoo. Oh, I'll have that one. What else have you got? I'll have that. Calm down, son. He's, Go on, what you got? He's, he's Benjamin Blanco. That's what he does. Yeah. That's what he does. Um, yeah. I said in the I said in the last post game, uh, well, not the Porto one, but the league game, um, because I've been unwell and have been all this week, and I'm still not feeling 100. percent But I've got did a. You, uh, did you do I've a got, death? I well, I was basically just laying on the floor for a week. Oh. Um, I was really not well, like really not well. Even now, I can. It's still here, and I'm still feeling really not great. But I'm persevering, persevering. Um, but you I said in the, huh? No, I won't. I won't. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, this game and this result is uh, is is, is glory enough. But I said that Jorginho might might sneak into the side, and we saw that today and what a performance he put in. Havertz up top, and uh, Jesus back on the bench, uh, which is nice to see. I will make a comment on Newcastle's lineup and that Carrius's first performance since 2018, and what a performance for him to remember, guys. Eh? 3,114 hey. days about a Premier League game. Hey, Liverpool 4, game. Brighton nil. He was like, oh, oh, we're playing football again. This is great. Do you notice during the game, they had to keep getting him and facing him in the right direction. He kept looking the wrong way out of the goal. He had no idea what was going on. No he was idea. like, oh, I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Third choice goalkeeper. But I don't think it really mattered who would have been in goal. Nick no. was decent. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. We were dynamite. We were dynamite from the opening. We were. Uh, first goal. What have you got? Um, I've got... Uh, I picked... Oh, no, not first goal. First note. Uh, I, the first note is the fact that we got a corner within 15 seconds, I think, pretty much set the standard of what we were going to be doing yep. for the rest of the game. Um, Erdegaard uh, was misplacing a few passes early on as well in the first sort of 10 minutes. Um, but mm. I've got 12 minutes here. I've got all Arsenal, Rice playing higher. That was the first time I really noticed that uh, Jorginho was playing like a, a, a slightly deeper role, like an old school deep line playmaker, which I really enjoy. But Rice had the opportunity to be able to dive sort of make really uh, high advancing darting runs forward. But also the fact that we were defending so high up the field, it allowed Rice to do that job that he does from the six, but in an eight. It was fantastic. I was really enjoying it, Danny. I was really enjoying it. Jonas has joined us. Lone Star Londoner has joined us. Des Moran is here. Good to see all you people. Um, yeah, my first note was, uh, what did you say, seventh minute, the um, the shot from Saka? Uh, no, I haven't got that. Oh, right. then seventh minute shot from Saka on the right. Didn't get enough behind the ball to do much with it. Carrier saves it easily, but you could see um, from that that uh, Saka was up for it tonight, wasn't he? He was on, I don't like to say on fire, but he had ants in his pants. They were all up for it. I, that's the first time in a, in a in a while that I've seen the Arsenal team look devastating. I know that we've played so well over the last few months, definitely after the winter um, after the winter training that we did. But this is probably one of probably been one of the most deadliest Arsenal performances, the first half performance that I've seen in a long time. It was just it was it was fun to watch. I was really enjoying it. I was like it was and it got it started to get a little bit embarrassing for Newcastle. They just weren't getting anything at all. Um, it's it was getting a little bit weird. Um, but should we just jump into the first goal? Seventeen minutes. Uh, that's my very next. Oh, hold on. I put uh, oh. ninth minute. A few nice bits of attacking play. Just waiting for it to click. And did it click? It did click. It Ooh, clicked many goodness. times, Danny. It clicked <laughs> many a time. Uh, 17 minutes. Gabriel again. It's But it, it goes down when you go to the replays. It goes down to a Botman and goal. Um, but set piece, Danny. Mm. We're pretty decent at this set piece malarkey, aren't we? We're this is the 18th. It. We are getting pretty decent at it. And once again, we're, we're, we're inflicting damage with that style of set piece where we've got Kivior, Havertz, um, Gabriel all sitting at the very back post and at the last minute they all dart to the front post causes absolute confusion confusion, bamboozling the entire Newcastle team and uh, it goes off Botman's leg very weirdly I thought it was Liveramento but it ended up being Botman so it was it was all very very weird but once again we're causing 
just absolute and utter chaos from set pieces. And that's that would have been our 18th goal this season. Here we go. So if you're if you're listening to this, we've just put an image up of the uh of Botman laying on the ground doing his best uh draw me like one of your, one of your French girls' impressions on the floor, <clears throat> uh bouncing off his off his leg and uh going over the line with um with Carrius looking bamboozled. Uh, the yellow ball here, I've had to highlight it. That's I've gone over part of the ball that you can see from um, the, to, to the side of Karius's stomach. And I've just made the circle bigger so people are, that are watching can see where the ball was when they freeze framed it because I've gone around it to make it more visible. Yeah. So um, it was a sham, shambolic defending by Newcastle. And we've had to, we saw that all night, time and time. How, how many shots are. Oh, how many shots of goal did we have? Oh, fuck it. Do you know how many we had at goal? How many shots? I've cr- I have no idea. I have no 15. idea. I know that Newcastle really. I know and that Newcastle didn't have one. It didn't have any in the first half, and that was the first yeah. time in a number of years where they didn't register a, a shot on target in the first half. In ten okay. years. Ten years. There we go. There we go, guys. And ten years. Had, and we had six on target. But that's the. If you look at those stats and see four one, you'd have thought, oh, we took, made the most up. We could have scored what, eight or nine goals today if things probably. would have gone slightly different. Now, Karius is probably going to get pelters from people, the media. If it wasn't for him, I mean, he made some decent saves and some decent blocks, didn't he? He didn't have a bad game, Danny. Mm. I just think we were on fire. We yep. were. We always performed really well after a Champions League game, a Champions League game that we would like to forget. Um, I was unwell for it, but uh, what did a you disappointing watch it? game. Uh, yeah, I did. I watched yeah. all of it. I was texting you through it. Um, disappointing game. Yes, disappointing. Yeah. This a really, really disappointing game. Um, I don't even really, really want to talk about it. But we've we've bounced back really well here, uh, and we've got ourselves back in charge. The funny thing is with the Botman own goal situation, because we've caused so much confusion and they and we've put so much pressure on them in the first seventeen minutes that they bamboozled themselves there and put it into their own net without really any pressure from anybody in and around them, which I find quite funny in itself. But there we are. Yeah, it is, it, is, um, it is at times odd, but I liked it. I ain't going to yes, complain. Next bit we are up to. So that's where we're down to 1 0, up to 1 0. Uh, 23rd minute, a great one from Martin. Now he's been getting a lot of grief lately, hasn't he? People going, we're not doing enough because Martinelli is too busy doing his tricks and uh, tricks and flicks and tricks. Oh, I know it's some kind of alliteration. Um, but he had a good game, didn't he? He did lots he did of good have... stuff, and he was at the base of uh, a lot of things that we did. He did have a really good game. I think the positioning in the midfield really allowed Martinelli to come in more, um, which is which is what he likes to do. I know I like Arteta likes to stick him out on the uh, on the bar, basically out on the very very wing, basically on the touchline. But Martinelli really uh, thrived um, coming inside and sort of combining really well with Declan Rice and and, and Kai Havertz, and we saw. A different style of Martinelli today, which I wish we haven't seen in a little while. So really unlucky for him to not get on the score sheet, that's for sure. But um, but yeah, it was really good to see sort of that old school Martinelli coming back today. I've said a few times that uh, he that quote from him after playing for Brazil, he said, I, I've never had so much freedom playing a game. Now, I think hopefully Arteta has seen that. Heard it, or maybe even knowing Arteta, he's watched the game backwards and forwards a half a dozen times, and seen that if you if you give him a little bit more freedom, don't restrict yep. him to only yep. up and down and putting crosses in. Yep. Let him do some of the stuff that Erdegaard does. Give him the kind of freedom that Saka has. Obviously, you can't have them both doing it at the same time because it'll be chaos. Yep. Just let him, just let him free, just like Kez. Let them free. I've not seen Kez. It's too. You love someone. To you must let them free. You, you. Did, if only somebody would write a song about that. That would, no, that would right? help That's a good, lot. Solid point. I've got yes. 22 minutes here. What have you got? Um, uh, the next one I've got is uh, uh, the goal. I've got the next goal. So oh, okay, yeah, so go. I've got 22 minutes. Yeah. White should have shot. I know it was on his left, but the guy was literally standing in front of the goal, and he, there was an he, opportunity for him. He didn't have the greatest of games today, did he? A couple of times he got past, and people got past him. Uh, him and Declan, a few things got past him, but they can. They just played. They just played 90 minutes midweek. They're playing. So that's three games in the space of a week. Players are going to be tired, and well, brilliant performance. They're playing, um, they're playing a lot of football. I'm not. I'm at the end of the day, we we won four one. I'm not going to get on his back too much about it. Mm. Before the show started, I said to Deke, "This is almost like prime Jorginho when he was playing for Napoli in Serie A five or six years ago, before Chelsea paid fifty million. One of the best players playing in that position in Serie A at the time." And then I said to him, did you notice that was the second time Jorginho did that lobbed ball? So tell us about the goal, Deke. 
Jorginho over the top, Martinelli cutting back really beautifully. Um, Havertz running in, making the opportunity count, and putting it under the keeper of of, of Carrius, who's uh, who's thinking, "Oh no, is this is this gonna is there gonna be many more of these opportunities? They're gonna be coming my way." Um, but uh, yeah, Jorginho. I was saying it to you before the pod. You were saying um, Jorginho when he was playing at Napoli, but mm. it reminded me of uh, Prime Fabregas, where he was just dict- dictating everything from a slightly deeper position. Yeah. Um, not only was he putting the ball over the top, but he was he was threading the lines, or uh, you know, uh, putting the ball through the lines. It was it was fantastic to watch and really beautiful to see. But Jorginho, he offers he offers stability um, on the pitch, but he offers a lot more as well with that passing that he, the passing range that he's got. Mm. Just, you know what I mean? We don't have to rely on his on his legs to carry him. We've just got to get him in the right positions, um, and uh, and and he can create opportunities like that. And Martinelli does so well to literally go, right, I've got to just get this into the danger zone and hope that somebody makes it. And Havertz does that and makes it 2-0. Yeah, so this goal I've got here, is that... Oh, that's... Yeah, it was, that is the goal. Because I'm thinking, now is it... If he's scoring now, but it's a replay, so the replay says 2-0. So obviously yes. that's, that's what was happening. Good. Yes. We've got 50-odd people watching us on Twitter at the moment. Hello, Ooh. everybody on Twitter. If we're not following you, let us know. And we will follow you. We follow every gooner that we know of. Um. And you can type if you're watching on Twitter, you can type it. Oh, get rid of that picture. And then uh, we will bring up your comments. Is there anybody here watching on Twitter who has uh, done anything? Nope. Like you see here, it comes up with a little red bit from Phil's comment. And also, there's people watching on Facebook. We have got seven people watching on Facebook. If you Hello? type anything, there we go. Here's, uh, here's me. See a little blue thing that says Facebook. That's, that's my made up name. So, uh, yeah, comment. Join in. Let us know what you think if you're on Twitter and Facebook, like all the lovely people are on on uh, YouTube. Uh, BX says the Real Regista role. I haven't tried that in Football Manager. It scares me. Uh, Lone Star says uh, Newcastle were two yards. We were qu- two yards quicker than Newcastle today. Very yep. true. What else have we got here? Uh, Lone Star Londoner says expecting seven goals against Sheffield United. Oh, someone it. on Twitter. There you go. The little X. They've got a Range Rover there. Very nice. Is it yours? Justice Peter, OBI George. Now, that's the name. What a great game. Not a bad way to make your your, your podcast debut there. Wonderful. Bernadette says, how is very overrated. We are seeing that this season, aren't we? They had a fluky season where everything was working wonders for him. And then now it's kind of, yeah. New, we said last night in the preview show at Stan, do you know how many points ahead of Newcastle we are? And he said, no. So we're 18 points ahead of them. We're now 21 points ahead of them. I don't blame me. That's how numbers work. I know numbers. I know all the numbers, Deke. Do you know numbers? Do you, you, I know a few numbers. Yeah. But as you got, as you know, as you guys know, I'm not the best with numbers. No. A- adding up, really, I'm not yeah. the best. But, yeah, it's interesting to see Eddie Howe kind of getting picked apart this season. Newcastle, like, they have been off the boil all season. Uh, I know that people are quite shocked with this result but overall when you really think about it and you put it back to basics it's not that shocking they've been shocking this season yeah. and we've been dynamite and we yeah. blew them up today and they don't like it up um, them this don't. is artist well i just wondered Dee, if you could you have a look out your window and see where all the arteta out people are um because i've had i can't see any out the front of mine i've looked in the bin and I've looked down the toilet. I can't see it. Where, where are they? Do, they? I can't hear I don't them. Know. Like, things have gone a bit quiet. They have gone quiet. And I tell you what, keep it keep it that way. Keep it that way. Um, I am loving the Arsenal right now. We are, we've got the best goal difference in the league right now, Danny. Amazing. The best goal difference in the league, mate. I've got a little uh, thing to bring up for that. Um, where is it, my brad? Uh, here we go. League table, people. Have a look at that. Breathe it in and enjoy it. Because uh, goals scored. We're only one behind Liverpool. We played the same number of games. Goals conceded, two less than Liverpool. And we've got the best uh, So we've got the best goals conceded. We've got the best goal difference. And we've got the third best points. And look at that run of wins. Win, 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 win. And like my avatar says, 25 goals in six games. And let's have a look at how many goals all season Burnley have scored. 25. And Sheffield United have scored 22. So we've scored more in six games than Sheffield United have all season. Not fair. And I'm doing a Sheffield United podcast tomorrow night with an American bloke who supports Sheffield United. Should be interesting. I'll do my best oh, okay. not to laugh. Yeah, poor boy. Fair play to him. Fair play poor to him. Boy. Fair play to him. I really oh. want to hear the story, Danny. 
yeah. how he supported Sheffield United being all the way over in America. It I is. Hear this story. I will try and find out. He did tell me, but I've forgotten. Oh, he did. Right. He did the the. If you really want to know, you go to uh, the preseason predictions on ABW's YouTube channel, and he was one of the guests. I had an Aston Villa, and I had a Sheffield United, and I had an Everton fan on. Uh, Luca, who has a YouTube channel called Luca AFC, says big up. I'm never sure what that means. What's up? I'm big and I'm up. Who yes. knows? Confusing. Uh, Fode BL Mansory. Well, that is a name. Hello. Gunners for life. Exactly. Rudy says, Martin Erdegaard following. Oh, Rudy is our resident quote getter. He's only bowled as a googly once, and the rest of them have been actual quotes. Erdegaard on Arsenal's demolition of Newcastle tonight. Quote, what happened against Newcastle last time gave us a little bit of extra fight today. We haven't talked just about a little that, bit. Have we? No, we haven't. We haven't. Do you want to say it? Do you want to say anything? Or should we just knowingly nod? No, I am. Uh, I I just enjoyed watching Bruno uh, Gimaraish come off the pitch um, looking like uh, someone who had given him some sour grapes. I enjoyed watching him getting picked apart by our midfield maestro of uh, Jorginho Odegaard. Um, we've got someone. Uh, Kyle Palmer has finally caught a live show. Lovely, jubbly. Uh, the social joined. See the difference when we are uh, we are allowed to attack and not play for draws. Ooh, cutting but true. LF is there. Hello, ladies. Hello to you yourself. Uh, Rudy says Odegaard, Jorginho, Declan. They were all so good today, threatening the ball through the lines. Wonderful. Avon is here. Uh, Tottenham 11 points behind us and their game in hand is against Chelsea that's a no-lose scenario true Michael says uh, where have you been Michael not snowed under Newcastle was a bit of a surprise last season this season other teams knew what to expect from Newcastle which is part of the problem we had this season is it because people knew what to expect from us so the first half of the season started out I said to myself it's boring football but Arteta has managed to to uh, to adjust a few uh, things here and there. And now we are playing, would you say, the last six games in the league are better than the football we played last season? I mean, that's that's the statement. Am I off my trolley? No, you're not. <laughs> uh, you're not. And I'll tell you what, if you said this last season, yeah. saying that we're gonna we're gonna go on a run of form next season that's even better than what we're performing now, I think people would call you crazy. But yeah. um, everybody's been trying to read us. They've even trying to read us with our with our set pieces, and quite rightly so, because we are the deadliest team with set pieces now, which is something that I never thought I would ever say. But I'm very happy to say it. Uh, but yeah, we we've been getting read by everybody. But then Arteta just went, I got an Uno deck and just Uno reversed everybody. I'm going to do something a little different now, and we are uh, looking amazing. <laughs> Daniel with a German sounding surname, uh, Schludenfrei. Good God, man, just I got that right. I, <sighs> I'm not holding a breath. I'm not holding my breath. I'm not holding Schludenfrei. My breath. Anyway, it might be related. I've, to I've heard worse. Fry. I've heard worse pronunciations of names. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Down. The only fry we know is that goalkeeper we're still waiting for. Six nil, five nil, four one. Looks like we're in an obvious decline. <laughs> it's well, there worse. is a decline there. That is true. <laughs> It is. Another quote from Rudy. Kai Havertz on Jorginho. I know him a lot, a long time now. So for me, it's always nice to play with him. I know him very well. He knows me very well. So it makes life easy for me. Champions League winners together, weren't they? They Kai, were. And the only we saw goal Kai has ever scored in the Champions League was the winner. Against, uh, well, it was uh, obviously for Chelsea, but it was at the Porto Stadium, wasn't it? I've got no um, idea. Yeah, in the first half of football, if Havertz would have scored... That would have been the the second time he had scored a goal at that stadium going in that direction. That's what they said, but I don't know. Pointless stats, uh, I guess. LF says, love seeing that little shit house Bruno getting it. You can swear as much as you want, people. If you can find a way around, obviously, no racial shit or other stuff we'll get in trouble for, but you can use a swear filter. You can you can try and get around it. it I see it as a challenge. Oh, I like and it. on Twitter, you can say whatever the fuck you want and it will come through. Loudmouth football, which. It might be a podcast. Here's the Loud Mouth Football Show. Hello. Uh, Jorginho and Rice pairing should be locked for the rest of the campaign. Now, that that is because I don't think Party's ever going to come back. I don't care what uh, they say. I'm pretty sure he's, um, you know, pretty much knocking on the first team. Uh, not first team, the squad. He's knocking, he's knocking on the squad door. Uh, I say that, uh, but uh, Timber is, uh, is going to be doing some squad stuff next week. Which is uh, which is really good to hear. Really, really good to hear. 
Daniel says, you got it right. Although I'm from, I, though I'm Israeli, born in the UK. Well, me and Deke give you a, a little nod for that. Uh, Social Join says, it's funny. People are actually scared to concede corners from us. Oh, that's great. Do you remember the days of, uh, of, of the Emery area where we couldn't even sort out playing out from goal, let alone sort out a corner? And now look at us. Free-flowing, beautiful football. Boy 10 says, Havertz is a genius signing, by the way. Controversially, he might be a mix between Will Todd and about, um, and about Diaby. Abu Diaby. Abu Diaby. Oh, Abu Diaby. I loved great. Abu Diaby, man. The guy, if he wasn't injury prone, he would have been world class. The guy had everything. So, boy, you've been saying that our season is on fire and it's time to hit it with a shovel and bury it in the garden. How, how do you feel now? Because uh, you are our, our barometer for a fair weather fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, not fair weather fan. Fair weather thinking everything's going to go all right. A fair weather fan might imply that you're not a fan. I didn't mean that. Um, as in, fair, we're going to win. We're not going to win. The season's going great. The season's over. That's what I meant. Wouldn't want to annoy you, boy 10. Uh, Phil says, Danny is a linguist in the same way Les Dawson is a decent pianist. Oh, he did that on purpose. Don't don't mess with him. Uh, Avon says, Kia scored for us against Lens. Again, I've been I've been shit on by the commentators in the in the Porto game. They said the only goal he'd ever scored was for Chelsea in the champ. Those, I'm getting the feeling, dude. The commentators don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Really? He said it might have been PSV. Uh, oh. LF says, "Ha ha, I like this game." And up the Elon. Also, we are we are fans of Elon. We are Elon Bros. So, uh, oh yeah, yeah, he can do no wrong. Ah, Rudy says, "quote We're hugely disappointed by what we delivered in the first forty-five minutes." Who said that? It's got to be Howe, right? No, oh, and he also says that um, uh, Saka has eight goals and one assist in his last seven games. He can't. That's not too bad, was it? Not bad. Uh, Rudy says Eddie Howe tells Carrie Brown TV. He is concerned by the inconsistency his team are showing and calls Arsenal one of the best teams they have faced this season. Ah, uh, That's all one quote. Cutting and pasting. And then let me guess, you pressed enter for the next line and it just posted it because, uh, yep. yeah, YouTube is shit like that. Uh, boy, da, 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 da. Right, let's move on a little bit. Otherwise, Mr. Waffles, Elon is a twit. And that right there is freedom of speech. You can have whatever opinion you want. And that's what Elon gives you. Well, Mr. Waffles is from not Portland, so that whole entire area. I'm surprised he even uses YouTube. As far as you you put your nut cutlet down long enough to come and <laughs> it'll what's that me something vicious now. <laughs> uh, he's got my he's got my number. I ain't getting away with that. Right, Deke, where were we up to? Um, uh, I've what? got I've got 25 minutes here. 52 percent of the game in the Newcastle half. 26 Ooh. minutes. Odegaard, amazing. Really unlucky yep. with some efforts from him. Yeah. And Odegaard and Saka. Combining beautifully, but uh, Martinelli really unlucky with his effort. Have you got any? Have you got anything? Yeah, I know. I say I've got the same numbers written down here. He was unlucky, and he deserved more than what he got from the game tonight. But I agree. That spur him on and encourage him to do it again the next game, and then see if he can get something done that game as well. But the next game, because there again, I know you don't do the previews, so you won't be able to talk about this much, but. Sure. Would you um, change it up against Sheffield United that you don't want to you don't want to shoot our load low too soon and maybe give some of the other players a start because playing against Sheffield United is much like playing an FA Cup third round tie against Lancaster, isn't it? I don't even know if there's a team from Lancaster. We're playing, so we're playing Sheffield United on a Monday at eight pm. Yeah. So I'm not sure when the second leg of Porto is. I think it's like the fifteenth, isn't it, or twelfth? Um, I have got all the. Uh, so we don't have here. to worry too much about having too many fixtures. It's twelfth. Okay. So we've got a game on the fourth. A game at Sheffield United. The ninth at home to Brentford, and the twelfth at home to Porto, and the sixteenth at home to Chelsea. So that means we're going to get four games in twelve days, and then we go fifteen days without a game. Well done, FA. Well done. Yeah. Well, you know. But I. Do you know what? I'm. I'm up for it. I, I'm all for it. I say just give Sheffield United what for. This is. Uh, Let's uh, let's put some more nails in their poor little coffin, um, I'm, I, and 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 work on that goal difference because it's so tight at the top. You know, we're two points off Liverpool at the top of the table, and we're one point off Man City, who are just above us. So that goal difference could come real, you know, come in handy real real quickly by the end of the season. So I, I say let's just go for it and go seven nil. That's what I'm thinking. Just go for it. Just play the exact same team that was playing tonight against Newcastle. 
Um, but don't you know we've got those we've got the five substitutions option options now. We'd have to worry too much about burnout. Um, yeah. We can make the changes and we can we can make changes whenever we want because I don't think Sheffield United are going to give us anything to worry about. So I'm not um, worried about that at all. We have um, we have royalty. Uh, podcast royalty in the chat at the moment. We have Mike Hertz from Guatemala. As it says along the bottom of the screen, Mike Hertz, in brackets, the leader of the Guatemala's Arsenal Ultras. He's not to be messed with people. No one say Ariba. Or you'll, or you'll wake up with a, a, pinata, a stuffed pinata head on your pillow next to your, in your bed. <laughs> and it won't be full of sweets. That's all I'm going to say. Hello, Mr. Hertz, who was kind enough to do the preview show and covered for you in the post-game show last week. So did you have to pay him any, any money or, or anything for it? I had to give him a handy shandy, but we weren't. We weren't oh, he's a, he's, he's a stickler for efficiency, if nothing else. I don't even know what that means. He knows what he wants. He knows what he wants. I can't, I can't deny a man that. Uh, Des Morans, Morans says, not Moran. Could be Moran. The uh, ex- it probably is United. Moran. Yeah, the ex- Did I say Moron? I... Moran, Moran. I might have done. Yeah, Moran, like um, the the, uh, the Irish bloke used to play for Man United. Yes. And lots of hair. I'd say Arteta showed a clip of that cowardly elbow from dickhead Bruno Guimaraes before the game, the way they came out of the blocks. You're waving your hand as if you want to say something there. No, no, that's probably right. We all watched the um, the Amazon Prime documentary. If you've I've seen not watched the last episode. Okay, well, spoiler I alert. Can't. <laughs> what happened <laughs> spoiler alert um but you know at the end of the day we saw what bruno uh Gimaraes did to Jorginho um a few months ago so i wouldn't be surprised if arteta did roll out the television and play it just before the game so very good um what am i going to look at now uh I'll put this one in to sort out some tweets as I go along. That's all right. Uh, Rudy I... has a quote from Erdegaard as yep. using the defeat to new FC Porto and Newcastle as motivation today. And the quote is, I think that defeat to Porto gave us extra motivation today. Also, what happened against Newcastle last time, it gave us a little bit of extra fight today. Well, there you yep. go. Yep. Um, well, we to move on with this because you've got to work early in the morning. I, I have. I've got a 7 a.m. start. I've got a 7 a.m. start tomorrow morning. So I'm really so, looking forward to that. Where so are we up to? I've got, I've got well 30, finish off the first half. That's all right. I've got 37 minutes here. Saka nearly scoring really amazing feet. Works really hard to retain the ball. Really unlucky to not have, uh, 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 have put it into the back of the net. And then I've got the 42 minutes here. I've got Jorginho playing like prime time Fabregas. And, and then I've got 44 minutes here. Raya is amazing. I thought Raya had a really good game today. Did? really? Yes. I think Raya had a really, really good game today. Not only with his offensive qualities, which we all know that he offers, the defensive qualities that he offers today. I think he came out um, of his box uh, in, in moments where it was a little bit sketchy, but it, it worked out beautifully for him. So I think Raya had a really good game. But then I say that, I, I think pretty much the entire Arsenal team. Really good it is indeed. S6 and that was Guna the first is there. Is that, um, is that you, Fergus? I know that's your uh, your Twitter name for your personal account. Um, another quote here from Rudy. Arsenal put us... Oh, no. Newcastle, uh, Eddie Howe. Quote, Arsenal were very good. We weren't, and we got punished. We were off in most aspects of our game. We didn't get do the basics right. Arsenal put us under pressure, and we made technical mistakes. You're going to get fired, son. You won't be there next season. Boy sounds, Ten uh, says, so boring to listen to. Even the quotes, um, I'm, I'm falling asleep listening to the quotes about him. He's just so, he's literally got a handbook of phrases to say, and he's just fucking reeling them off. Boring, boring. Boy Ten says, are we going to use our matches until Porto to practice the dark arts? Question Danny Bookmark it. Question, Danny. Bookmark it. <laughs> and we can answer that now. I don't think we're going to resort to the dark arts. Oh, we don't need to. We have got all the skills. But a lot of the Porto problem was the, the shit referee and the shit pitch wouldn't allow us to play our game. And that won't happen again. All we need is a goal. Let's do, we'll score one goal. That'll be, that'll oh, be easy. Danny, I think, I think most Arsenal fans, if not all Arsenal fans, are extremely confident that we will, um, we will come out of the round of 16 with a victory yep. against Porto. Good. Right. I'll summarise a few things of the second half. Uh, 46 minute Kai through just pokes it wide. So close. Should have scored. Saka, yeah, we should have scored. Saka missed one of the last 105 Premier League games. When you're arguably your best three players, I don't want to say we have one best, but when he is that consistent, plus with the goals and games and assists, must make Sam Arteta's life a lot easier. 
52nd minute, things settling down now. And the next one is 61st minute. Isaac down the left sends White the wrong way and has a decent shot that goes over. So have you got anything in and around 60th minute? Because I was, don't. I got quiet, don't. didn't it? I've got 62 minutes, Martinelli, for Trossard. Ah, that's all I've got. Yep. Got a nice, nice round of applause. Uh, yes. Another quote here. Arteta, everything, the way we started, the aggression and the positivity showed in our play from the beginning. We started to generate chances to go off for more. Uh, we go for the second, the third and the fourth. Uh, that's that one. Oh, here we go. The team didn't want to stop. You could feel there was something there in their tummy. Today, the atmosphere was phenomenal. I'm really pleased. Now, from the road, speaking of ton uh, tummy, sorry, one quick, oh, quick, quick thing. In the in the very boring city Bournemouth game today, Ruben Diaz had a moment where he projectile vomited <laughs> on the pitch, ran over, oh. got a couple of paracetamol by the looks of things, and just carried on. <laughs> It's amazing how people think paracetamol is going to help you when you when you. I don't know what up. he took, but it looked like he took a couple well, yeah, of pills probably to is. settle his stomach or something. I don't know. Well, it's Man but City. It's was... it probably yeah. he had the drip doctor. Probably, probably, but it was funny. It was fair play to him. It was quite funny uh, to see him projectile vomit and then just carry on playing football. He's just like, oh, got a um, mm. Going by Rudy's quote, where Arteta says, "We went for the second, third, and the fourth. Have we seen the end of 1-0 up? Oh, there we go. We'll just cruise the rest of the game because Arteta has lost so many points, games and goals by just cruising with one or two goals, hasn't he? And yeah, that sounds like he's gone and we wanted to get more. Yeah, I'm I'm very happy that we're not resting on our laurels at all anymore. Um, we are scoring a goal early doors and then we're, we're using that opportunity to have the game open. Because I think now when we watch a game, especially so far this year, um, when we've scored, we've just got, we've, I think, I think most, if not all of the Arsenal fan base have all gone, right, well, game on. The game is now going to open up to our advantage and we're going to take advantage of that advantage and score more goals. And we're doing that. With 20, what was it? 25 and six, 25 goals in six games, guys. Wonderful. Right. Do you want to do the next two goals? Uh, yes. So Saka, amazing finish from him. I just... The guy's great, isn't he? Bukayo Saka. You said that, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's good. He's, he's pretty he's decent. Great. He's pretty decent. I, I wouldn't class him as world class, you no. know, or anything like that. He's uh, barely out of nappies. That's completely correct. Um, the thing is with Bukayo Saka is not only do you love him as a football player, but you love him as a person as well. And I find that really difficult to fall in love with a football player because they always bring in politics or something, in, or something, or they say something stupid, or they toe the line and do something stupid. But you, I genuinely love this guy. This guy's fantastic. He's a fantastic football player. The fact that he plays, what, 105 games? Yep. Um, back to pretty much back to back. What yep. was it? What was the stat that you one? Gave? He's missed one in 105 Premier League games. There we go. I think, and uh, and Ali McCoist, as much as you know, I Ali like McCoist. him. Yeah, he's not too bad. He, he comes across pretty well, if I'm honest with you. Um, I was listening to him on the uh, on TNT. Um, and uh, you know, even he said it's one of the it's one of the most important aspects of football nowadays is availability, being available for football. Um, and we've got a, a number of play players who offer that. Um, Declan Rice and, and Bakaya Saka are the two players that come to mind. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in love with Saka and, and, and what a goal, what a goal from him. And this puts us, as I said, that, you know, with 39 goal difference. Uh, in the 64th minute. Yeah. Do the two goals. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, oh, set piece. Yeah. 68th minute set piece. 19th goal. Uh, 19th set piece now that we've scored. Rice to Kivior. They tried to give it to Miley. They tried to give it to Miley. They tried to give it to Lewis Miley, but they didn't do it. They gave not, it to Kivior. Not, not having it. Not having it. But another set piece, guys. Another set piece. If I said to you a couple of years ago that Arsenal would be the deadliest set piece team in 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 England, I think most people would just laugh at me, and I and I, I I'd laugh at myself for making those sorts of comments. I'm laughing at you just thinking about it. It's 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 weird, isn't it? It's such a weird concept that we are so dominant with set pieces. And I think I don't know who mentioned it before in the comments, but somebody said teams are actually worried at conceding set pieces to us, especially yeah. corners. And the fact that we got a corner within the first fifteen seconds set the tone, Danny. We are four 0 up at this point. Um, 
Phil Macca says, Ali McCoy's was the Scottish Shearer in his day, fab player in the Scottish team. I mean, you look at the, the that's back when Rangers were a decent side and they go into Europe and they'd be half decent. Yep. And yeah, go and just have a look at Wikipedia and have a look at Ali McCoy's, the goals. He did. And then he came to, back to Rangers when they've been relegated to the fourth tier, one fourth tier, one third tier, won a cup along the way. And then for some reason they got rid of him just before they got promoted to the, the Premier League again or Premiership, whatever they call it. Quick question here from Man Lots of Numbers. Um, was Rio Ferdinand a world class, in quotes, defender when he played professionally? It's got to be up there, hasn't he? As much as we hate him, the little prick. Listen, we're not we're not going to lower ourselves to the level of Rio Ferdinand. Yes, right. he was a world class defender when he was playing for Manchester yeah. United, he um, was and when he cross, was playing for England, he was probably Man United's Sol Campbell with a touch of Tony Adams in it. I completely big, agree. Up for corners, took no shit, domineering, won a lot of stuff, and then rather than retiring, he went to play for QPR and ruined it all. So I mean, your 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 career's tarnished with me. You might as well just not bother with any of it. So we medals taken off you. So, did you cover both the goals? What have I, I got covered? I covered. I covered both the goals. Seventy um, third minute, ref is a muppet. Got in the way of a Raya. Uh, a, a, what could have been an, an amazing opportunity. Here, but here is the third goal, Saka. Yeah. Um, Erdegaard even he's celebrating even before the balls in the. Back yeah, the look back. at that. I didn't. I never didn't notice that until you pointed it out. Erdegaard is celebrating, and the ball is nowhere. It's just entered the six yard box. That's how confident our captain is when yeah. Saka is on the ball. Um, it went through the legs of, I think that's Botman. No idea. It went through about three of them, uh, three players. It, he got it, round on the it, edge of the box. It went through a lot of Newcastle players to get into the back of the net across the face of the goalkeeper. I saw this picture uh, when they Beautiful. were doing the, uh, doing the video and uh, when, when they were showing it live and I was like, Oh, the big flag with him there. Celebrate. What, what a shot. What a shot right there. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. So that's the third goal. Um, have you got an image for the fourth? I couldn't get a decent one because it's so right. blurry. And I'm not sure I agree with massive flags waving during a game. People might be trying to take a photo of Saka when he's coming up and going, oh, excellent. There's a huge fucking flag in the way of me taking a photo of Saka at the only game I'm going to this season as he's walking towards me. No, don't want big you flags. Are, you are right. You are Before right. The game, but after but the they game, look majestic, Danny. They look it majestic. does. For a photo opportunity, it's good. But when I see those big flags, I get those Arteta eyes. I'm not happy. Stop it. This I, isn't I Italy. Can, uh, I can sit go. down with your cup of tea and your prawn sandwich and be quiet. So, uh, 73rd minute, uh, Raya takes a quick goal kick. While I was tweeting and doing stuff, did you mention that where it hit the referee? Yeah, I just said 73rd minute ref is a muppet. Ah. Yeah, okay. Um, 74th minute, a few substitutions. Smith Rowe, yep. Nelson and Eddie on for Erdegaard, Kai and Saka. Yep. And then I only have... Uh, Arsenal were the first team... Did you hear this bullshit stat? Oh, Arsenal the, the, the first second team half in... things and stuff. Yeah, like. go on, tell them. What did they say? <laughs> oh, I didn't what, know Nelson? what, right? I started listening to it and my ears switched off because yeah. it was just such a rubbish... I mean, I like, I like a good stat, but no... Christ, man, they were reaching for straws with some of these stats that they were piling out at this point. But the only real stat that I really liked was the 25 goals in six games. That was just world class. And the fact that we've got the most clean sheets in the season at the moment. Yeah. For a team, which is I did have a I did have a thing for that, which I've got here, but I wasn't sure whether um saving it would jinx it because uh straight after they put that up, eight yep. second minute. Yep. What minute did they score their goal? They scored in. They scored two <laughs> minutes later, so they yes. did kind of jinx it. People at home, most curse. clean sheets this season. Arsenal won ten. How have Everton got eight clean sheets and they're shit? They've played fairly decent this football. season. They've played fairly decent. This yeah, they had a good. Can we? Uh, speaking of Everton, they sold yeah. a Wobi to Fulham, and yeah. a Wobi scored the winner against United at Old Trafford Beautiful. today to beat them two one. Beautiful, Beautiful stuff. But yeah, yeah, commentators curse. Commentators curse, Danny. It was indeed. And the final note that I've got is uh, the Willock goal. Tell people about their goal because it really come out of nothing. But yeah, he's, he's a gooner. He didn't celebrate. And uh, yeah, they scored. I don't think, uh, well, I would have liked to have seen that situation when it was maybe 1-0 or they scored the first goal. He's not yeah. going to celebrate because it's 4-0 at that point. You know, he's going to, he, he can use the, uh, you know, picking up the ball and bringing it to the center uh, of the pitch to get kickoff early. You know, kick kickoff going again yeah. instead of doing the no celebration celebration. 
because I still feel like that's a celebration. It's moronic. I think it's a load of rubbish. But yeah, w- uh, Willock looping header um, over the top of Rao, and it was it was comical. And I'll tell you what, the first thing that came to mind was I was gutted that we conceded um, a goal, and I feel like a lot of people resonate with that as well. Um, disappointment yeah. and and just the fact that you know we should have had the clean sheet and we should have con- uh, beaten them convincingly with a four nil. But well, it got a goal, and it is what it is, and we 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 just move on. Uh, yeah, by ten, being world class doesn't translate to being able to talk about the game. Yeah, he should. Uh, I agree. If the, if the TV companies and radio companies give a damn about the fans, they would have a vote and say, right, first of all, you have to register who you support, and then we are going to vote on people who do commentating on the radio and the TV. And if it's a, someone who played for your club, you're not allowed to vote. And I bet you, ninety percent of the people would say Carragher, Ferdinand, all these people. Nearly all the female commentators will all never be on TV or radio again. I mean, I heard Francis Benali was doing the commentating on Radio 5 today. And what the fuck is Francis Benali? Only ever played for Southampton and was never magnificent. Runs, owns a, a string of curry houses now in Southampton, Southampton legend. Why was he commentating on Liverpool, on, on Man, Man City Bournemouth? Huh? Pointless. Nobody, mo- nobody else wanted to do it. I have no idea. Uh, partly maybe because Man City don't have any legendary players that, are, that, have, that have retired because they didn't have any back then. They're either True. dead or haven't been ex- haven't existed yet. They've so, only um, existed since 2011. Yes, they are. Um, 2011? 2009. 2009. Sorry, 2009. I apologise. I took two years off you guys. Yeah. Uh, Mike Hurts says, Ramsdale would have stopped that. I don't know if that's true, but everybody else says it's when we concede. Yeah, oh, well, we, uh, I'm not, we're not we're not digging up the goalkeeper talk anymore. We're not digging that up anymore. We're leaving that will be. Yeah. Um, have we got any more notes? Um, um, I've just got a couple. Um, ESR well, had a couple of opportunities, looked bright. Yeah. But I think a, f- a few people was well mentioned in the chat that he didn't offer the defensive qualities that Erdegaard offers. That's for sure. Yeah. And it, uh, it caught us in a couple of op- um, a couple of moments of bother. 87 minutes. El Nenny comes on for Jorginho, man of the match. Danny, Jorginho, man of the match? Um, oh, I think so, yeah. Although Saka's always impressive, so you have to take a point off of Saka just because he's brilliant. It's unfair. You have to handicap him a little bit. Uh, Erdegaard was a... Uh, Jorginho was a joy to watch. Now, Erdegaard was silky and wonderful. Kai had his good game, bad game, good game, bad game. So against Sheffield United, bring him on for a minute, get the bad game out of the way, then take him back off again. That has to be the only tactic we can use of him. Same with Trossard. Good game, average game, bad game. That's the way Trossard works. So we've got to work out some kind of system to make sure these players, when they we need them, they, they've played the bad game in the game before. Uh, yeah. I will give my man of the match to Jorginho. Just a joy, just a joy. Wonderful. He loves yeah, the game. Yeah, it was beautiful to watch it. him. I really Fabregas was one of my favourite players growing up. Um, mm. My in my teens and my late and my twenties, I absolutely loved Cesc Fabregas. Whenever I played football, I don't play football now, but when I still played football, um, I modelled my game after Cesc Fabregas, just control in the middle of the park. Um, I absolutely loved it. Jorginho was was it was a joy to watch him tonight. Really, a real oh, joy indeed. to watch him. Um, Boy Ten says Raya has Achilles' heel. He lets some shot. He lets in some shots. The shots do come out of nowhere though, because he excel excels at stopping at the last event before the shot. Mister Waffle says Jorginho looked like a leader out there. We missed that. A lot of talk in the summer uh, and January was saying he's going to be going soon. He's only thirty-one. In the position he plays football, you can still be doing that at the top class of it, top of his level in the Premier League at thirty-four, thirty-five, they've, maybe they've even thirty-six. Already... They've got a contract extension and um, to extend it for another year. They're probably gonna. They'll just. They'll just do that. If that. Um, I, if I'm right in thinking, guys, that he's got um, an added option for another year, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll just do that. And if, I, when he leaves Arsenal, he'll go to Italy. He'll, he'll do like a Gennaro Gattuso. I don't mean go and be a shit manager everywhere. I mean go and play in that holding role in defence uh, yep. in front of the the back three for every plays for until he's forty two. Yep, I agree. I agree. Right. Uh, Brilliant. That's it. Right. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, four one guys against uh, against the subpar Newcastle side. But it was the it was in the manner of which that we defeated Newcastle today, guys. We defeated them with clinical and uh, just dominance. We were we were dominant from the moment we started. As I said, the first note I've got, guys, corner within fifteen seconds. 
And the fact that we've scored 19 goals from set pieces this season, we're a force to be reckoned with. And the season is going to finish with a huge bang, and I'm all for it. Let's go. Let's go. Ex exciting times indeed. Um, before we go, I want to say a quick hello and thank you to everybody who watches this on Facebook. We've been on Facebook for 10 years putting our podcast. No, yeah, about 10 years. And normally we get three or four or five people watching. The preview game, uh, the Porto preview with Mike Hertz, 200 and, and Gerard, 214 views on Facebook. The post game with Mike Hertz, mostly Guatemalan people watching, 142. There's a show the other day with uh, you and me, the, uh, I don't know, whoever did the preview, me and Stan preview show, I think it was, got 110. There was one with me and you uh, recently that got the, um, the, the, uh, the, for the, uh, the forest one, that got 71. Where are all these people coming from? We're getting a couple of hundred people watching on YouTube. Coming on, out of woodwork, on, mate. On Facebook. I mean, since while our views on YouTube are dropping like like the Titanic sinking, uh, plus all the people on Twitter, because a lot of people watch this, and all the people who retweet us on Twitter, thank you very much. It really helps the podcast. We've got 35,000 followers, and shame we don't get 35,000 views, because then I might not lose about £200 a year organize, funding this shit show. So thank you very much to everybody. Uh, oh, Mike says, I brought my whole country with me. Also, what's the Facebook? You're not allowed to use it. Um, oh, right. And Super is here. I'll be damned if you aren't on a live. Hello. Well, hello to you, Super, who's been here for many, many years. And Phil's asked a question. I haven't pre-read it. I hope it's going to be a good one. Question, is sticking to FFP going to stop Newcastle turning into C? Yes. Yes. Yes, we're go. already seeing that. We're already seeing that. The thing is, um, the the model that Chelsea and City did early doors was an unexpected one. It was a new style of what's going on here, whereas we're very much used to that now. So building up that reputation from a very low level to up where, where we are now, it's not going to be like where City and Chelsea just started and they just started buying big players because they were getting big money. The reputation is also needed now. Um, alongside it, it's not. It's not like where Man City can just get get by Robinho, and they're like, so where the hell is from? You know what I mean? So I, I really, I really can't see it happening with Newcastle. I know that Newcastle are the richest club in the world, but I, I yeah, I think Newcastle are going to come unstuck. We'll see what happens. Fingers crossed, eh? Yeah, jolly good. I think it's. I think it's going to turn out all right. Right, people. That's the end of the show. Dick's got to go to bed. He's got to be up early in the morning. Thank you very much. Seven a.m. boys on a Sunday. Madness. I won't even be awake at 5 p.m. tomorrow. Maybe not even 6 p.m. In fact, 7 a.m. I'll still be watching uh, Jay Streasy on Twitch, wandering around India, getting in trouble. Uh, right, that's it. Uh, we'll be back sometime in the week for a podcast. Not sure which day yet. I haven't asked people. I will be on a Sheffield United podcast on Sunday night. It doesn't do them live. And then there's no game midweek, is there? No, we're not playing oh. till we're not playing till Monday. Wow. So there you go. Plenty of time for, for parties in Chenko and Jesus to get fit, get injured, get fit, get injured, get fit, and come back again, break down in training, and then be out for the rest of the season. Looking forward to that. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much, Deke. And we will see you later. Toodles. Bye-bye. As soon as I scored that goal, I was fucking livid. Get down, dog. Splendid business. He nearly caught the bloody thing. What are you talking about? <laughs> So I've just eaten a full quiche. Well, you don't often see them at him. So when you see them in the supermarket, they need to be swagged. Microwaved immediately and get the brown sauce on one. Bosh, Bob's your uncle. Never in doubt.